name is Sarah and I'm a science educator at Claytor Nature Center and today we're going to talk about the basics of backyard birding. Have you ever seen a bird and wondered how to identify it? Well in Virginia there's over 400 different species of birds and it may seem overwhelming to try and identify an individual. Today I'm going to share some tips that will help you determine the identity of almost any bird. A field guide, whether virtual or hard copy, is a valuable resource when you are birding. But if you don't know where to look, how to narrow down your search, you may be stuck flipping through hundreds of pages just trying to find a picture that looks like the bird you saw. The first thing to determine when birding is your geographical region. You want to be looking at the correct field guide, whether that be North American birds, birds of the eastern United States, or birds from your particular state. The more specific the guide, the easier it will be to find your bird. This field guide is to the mid-Atlantic states, New York down to Virginia, so it will include all of the birds we may see here, as well as birds further north. It is also helpful to identify the habitat. Are you near the coast or further inland, where you're unlikely to see shorebirds? Are you in the mountains? Keep in mind that some birds are commonly seen in urban and suburban areas, but others are shy and will not be seen except in the most remote areas. For example, you'll see house sparrows around apartment buildings and super centers, but you won't find a wood thrush out in the open. They're secretive and they're hard to spot even in their preferred habitat, the forest. So, you've determined your region and habitat. When you see a bird, the most obvious identifier is usually color. Some birds are named for their color, like the bluebird, jay, and goldfinch. Now, you've got to be careful when identifying your woodpeckers. They are also named for their color, but many people make the mistake of identifying any woodpecker with red on its head as a red-headed woodpecker. The true red-headed woodpecker has a head and neck that is completely red. The red-bellied woodpecker has red on its head, but only the back and the top, and a pinkish-orange belly from whence it gets its name. The pileated woodpecker has a red crest. The downy has a small red spot on its head, and the female doesn't have any red on it at all. Even the many brown and gray birds have identifying markings. The Carolina wren has a white eyebrow. The tufted titmouse has a feathery crest. Don't be overwhelmed when you see a dozen different brown birds in your field guide. As you get to know them, they become easier to tell apart. So if you can't distinguish color or markings, shape, size, and silhouette can be helpful. Is the bird small, like a wren or a sparrow? Is it large, like a crow, jay, or woodpecker? Does the bird have a crest or hold its tail in a particular way? What shape do the wing and tails make in flight? You can tell many birds just by their silhouette. Once you get to know birds, you can also distinguish them by their behaviors. Many species have unique personalities and habits. The eastern Phoebe bobs its tail up and down when perched. Nuthatches move up and down trees clinging to the bark, often upside down. As you can see, there are a lot of ways to identify a bird, many ways to narrow down the possible species. The best way to get better at bird watching, of course, is to practice. Just have fun watching birds, and you'll come to recognize them like old friends. You can watch birds from your window, in your backyard, at the park, on hiking trails. Let me know in the comments your favorite place to see birds. I'd love to see pictures of the birds you have seen as well. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. All this information and more, as well as fun activities, lessons for students, and crafts are included in each email. Watch for part two of this video series coming out next week. We're going to talk about birding by ear. Until next time!